Hello everybody, this is BB Wags coming to you for a second time, and I'm very excited to be doing so. I want to thank you all for your kind words and kind comments for my first video that I made a week or so ago, I suppose. And uh, I especially wanted to thank Once Bitten for uh, watching in, listening in, and uh, leaving his kind comment. And uh, Once Bitten, I did want to let you know, if you, uh, if you do see this one as well, that I, I watched uh, Malorian's uh, kind of spoof on the way you uh, talk and play and, you know, your battle reports and everything. And, and while I have to admit I laughed hysterically at his uh, video, um, some payback is in order, and uh, so if you're no good at doing that kind of spoof in return, just remember, I know it's a long ways to drive or fly, but you can always go to Canada and burn his house down. Uh, just saying. Anyway, with that, with that in the backdrop there, um, I am excited to come to you again. I do not have any uh, models painted. Uh, more so than last time. This is one of the main reasons why this log is called the Casual Gamers Log. Uh, it's been however many days since that last video and life is just crazy. I've not had any time to do any pain. But what I do have is some Bretonian Men at Arms. And I'm not showing you this picture because of the awesome way that I put them together. That is pretty straightforward. But I, I just love these models. I mean, they're old models. This is an old line uh, for Bretonia, these men at arms. But they're just great models. Um, there's a lot of detail. There's a lot of uh, variance on the sprues. Even, you know, I remember the first time that I opened up a uh, the newest of the Space Wolf sprue and was just amazed at the detail and the options on the sprue. But these ones uh, cut and, and done a long time ago are pretty darn good too. So I was really excited to put these together. I got these out of the uh, battle battalion. Uh, box for Bretonia, and uh, so we've got 20 of them there. I love the full command, and uh, yeah, I just they're just great, great models. And you you gotta love this guy right here. I mean, if you can rock a mustache like that, you deserve to be holding the flag. And uh, yeah, what can I say? Uh, actually, if you if you want to help me out here in the comment section, uh, let me know what color that mustache needs to be. Whether it's gonna be like a you know a, a big Italian man black mustache, or you know like a strawberry blonde with a Scandinavian man, uh, something like that. I don't know. It's just my 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 mind runs wild sometimes with these little insignificant details uh, that still add so much character. Uh, to to an army and the way it's painted and everything. Uh, the next uh, picture I want to show you is kind of silly, uh, but yeah, those are shields. Those are the Bretonian men at arms shields. Because in the last picture you'll notice they didn't have them holding them. Uh, I wanted to show you this because this is growth for me. Uh, in times past, I would have demanded of myself to put those shields on the model to be able to, you know, then slap them down on the tabletop and everything. But that's not my focus right now. My focus right now is not playing. It is putting stuff together and painting. And I just figured that it would be so much easier to paint the models before you put the shields on. So I'm going to base them, I'm going to paint them eventually, and then I'll put the shields on. So I'm learning patience, slow but sure. And uh, I think these videos are actually going to be one thing that both motivates me and helps me to keep a certain level of patience so that I can do a good job to show everybody. Uh, the second part of this video that I want to share with you is just a very simple movement tray that I just made myself. It's nothing spectacular. Um, it probably doesn't look quite as good as the ones that you can buy from Games Workshop, but I guarantee you that it's a whole lot cheaper and uh, and you can make any size you want to. So that's what it looks like when it's finished. I uh, magnetized the models. Those are amazing uh, rare earth magnets. Um, I got these from I forget what the seller was. I bought them a long time ago from a guy on eBay um, or an actual official store seller. And they're not expensive at all. You'd like seven bucks for, I don't know, 50 of them or so. And they work wonderful. They hold the, the, uh, the model on the, on the magnetic metal tray. They don't move or slip around or anything like that, yet they're easy to take off. Um, and so right here is what I cut up for the 
uh, inset of the tray that you can't see when all the when all the models are on it. It is just a big oil drip pan that you can buy from Walmart, and I think it's at least at my Walmart it's like twelve bucks. But that sucker is almost four feet long and two feet wide. So if you have more models than you can fit on that, then you won't mind spending the money for another one. Uh, it's real thin, quite pliable as long as you don't actually have creases in it. You'll see in that, that one there I have to work around some creases because my kids got a hold of this. Um, but then uh, then you have some, some wood stuff here. These are just uh, real thin um, beech wood uh, planks that I got from uh, my local Michaels, you know, your craft store. Real thin uh, sheet plywood, some of the uh, real thin um, below that, um, they're, they're not dowels, they're not rods, they're, they're squares, but you know, they're you know, a sixteenth of an inch or an eighth of an inch uh, square each way around, and that just serves as the lip around the, the, um, the tray. And uh, so what I did on the right, there's the metal piece that I cut out. You can actually kind of see the grid work there. I let the uh, the magnets, you know, glue them on the bottom of the, the models, let it uh, dry so that I wasn't actually going to glue the magnet to the metal. And uh, then just lined up the men arms in formation on that big sheet of metal, um, drew around it, traced around it with a Sharpie, and then cut it out exactly as it was supposed to be. And then I laid that on top of the birch uh, plywood and um, then put the three smaller pieces around it, glued them in place, and then just use an exacto to cut around that. And bam, there you go. So then all you have to do is just uh, super glue the metal piece inset inside and uh, there you go. You've got yourself a movement tray. It takes you know about five minutes to do it and uh, it's real real cheap actually and so you can have any amount of movement trays you want to for your different armies um, make a tray to suit every occasion um, and it's I love them I really really do and uh, I, I don't know I, I enjoy putting them on the table uh, I think it looks good and I know that I made it I didn't just buy it I made it and for some reason that makes a big difference so if you're into saving a little bit of money and you don't mind spending a little bit of time to do something like that maybe this is something that you're interested in in any case that's what I have to show you show you this time I hope you enjoyed it and uh, we'll catch you next time enjoy the game and God bless you